Lift up your voice in song to the mighty one. Lift up your hands in praise. Fall on your knees at the throne of the Holy One. Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days. He is the light that shines in the darkness. He is the rock that stands. Glory and honor and power be unto the Lamb. Lift up your voice in song to the Mighty One. Lift up your hands in praise. Fall on your knees at the throne of the Holy One. Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days. Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's proclaim it from the rooftops. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bend. Every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father. Say it with me. Jesus Christ is Lord. This is Daily Bread. I'm Father Al Lauer. Glad you're with us today. Today we're going to talk about the scapular. The scapular, that is a, um, a little, uh, two pieces of cloth held together by a string. And these pieces of cloth represent Mary, Mary the mother of Jesus. Mary, our adopted mother, she has decided to adopt us. Uh, because Jesus told her to on Calvary. This represents her mantle. It's almost like a little child going up to, to his or her mother and the mother kind of putting her cloak, her coat around this child, protecting and uh, enfolding this child in her loving arms. That's what this scapular represents, the mantle or the cloak of Mary. And uh, we are children of Mary, at least according to the Lord's plan. And uh, that is why she just puts her cloak around us. But there's more to it than that. We're going to explain it in just a moment. A lot of people, they wouldn't be caught dead without their scapular. They always want to be sure to have their scapular on them. Usually it's worn inside. And, but other people say, scapular, what in the world is that? Well, we're going to explain that in just a minute. But let's start off praying. We're going to bless everyone. This water represents our baptisms because we've been baptized into Christ Jesus. We've been baptized into his death. We've been buried with Christ. We share a like resurrection. We are a new creation because we have been baptized into Christ. All right. Let's just pray. Father, we pray right now. For everyone who's watching this program, that everyone would be truly discipled by you. Everyone would be open to the people you send into his or her lives in order to be holy, in order to be like you, in order to be a true disciple. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for doing it. We praise you. We adore you. We love you. You're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful, Lord, we praise you. Wonderful, Lord, we love you. Wonderful, Lord, we adore you. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord, make us holy in every aspect of our conduct. May we hunger and thirst for holiness. May we be holy as the Father is holy. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Where did this whole idea of having someone's cloak thrown around you. Where did that come from? I gave you this image of, uh, of, of a mother enfolding a child in her cloak, protecting this child and loving this child. But uh, is there any other basis for putting a cloak around someone? Now you who know your Bible well will know the answer to this. Look at 1 Kings 19, 19. 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 19. Elijah, the great prophet Elijah, is calling Elisha to be his disciple. 
So Elijah goes out, 1 Kings 19, 19, and he comes upon Elisha, son of Shaphat, and as he was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, so Elisha is plowing, and Elijah goes over to this guy plowing, and guess what he does? He throws his cloak over him. Now, uh, for us, we would look at the guy and say, what in the world are you doing? But uh, in those days, they knew what that meant. That meant, I am calling you to be my disciple. And of course, being my disciple is to lead you to the Lord. That's what that means, throwing the cloak over. It's an official invitation to become a person's disciple. And the Lord wants us to be disciples of Him, but He has this work out as we become disciples of other people. In Matthew chapter 28, the Lord said, The Great Commission, go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and know that I'm with you always, even unto the ends of the world. So we are to make disciples of all nations. But how does that happen? Well, like if you look at 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Or in 1 Corinthians 4, 6, he says the same thing. Or in Philippians 3, 17, he says, imitate the people that are imitating me because I'm imitating Christ. He says in 2 Thessalonians 3, 7, to imitate him. Well, imitation is the way of being a disciple. This, uh, being a disciple is not just learning a few things. It's not just going around with a person here and there. It's imitating a person. So we become disciples of Jesus, not in some sort of abstract thing, but we become disciples of Jesus by being a disciple of a person that we can see right in front of us. The, do, do you understand how this works? Now, a lot of people aren't being discipled for Jesus because they're sitting there expecting Jesus to disciple them with no... With no uh, a live, uh, right in front of my eyes person is part of that process, and that just is not the way it works. How did Barnabas get discipled? How did Paul get discipled? How did Peter get discipled? How did John Mark get discipled? How did Timothy get discipled? They were working with people who were discipling them. And so that's what we need to do. And um, Mary is certainly a great disciple. You say, well, you have to have somebody you can see. Well, yes, you do, but you can also be discipled by, uh, by people that you can't see just as long as they reach out to you and you reach out to them. Now, uh, Mary's discipleship doesn't mean I don't need anybody else, but it really helps you be discipled by somebody else. So if you want to put it this way, you should get Mary's uh, cloak around you, accepting her as the mother who will disciple you. Oftentimes mothers are called to disciple their own children, fathers to disciple their own children, pastors to disciple the members of their church, and, and just leaders discipling this one and this one and this one. Yes, we need Mary's cloak around us, but we need somebody else's too. Uh, and so the, the scapular isn't uh, a way of saying, I don't need other people. It's a way of saying, uh, Mary is helping me open up to my need for other people, especially to get into a discipleship relationship. So you need somebody else's cloak around you too. And now, this may sound odd to people, but it's not very odd in the world, you know. Like, uh, for example, the Rolling Stones are discipling so many people, not into the kingdom of God, but maybe into the kingdom of darkness, into a particular lifestyle that is certainly more a death style. But they're discipling so many, literally thousands and thousands, all the big superstars and rock stars and famous ball players and politicians and all these people. They're all discipling people. Not for Jesus' sake, but for others, other reasons and other circumstances. But uh, no, notice in this case, 
you're, a, uh, you're being discipled by the Rolling Stones. You don't think of it that way, but you imitate them. You imitate their ways of acting, their lifestyle. You really get into that whole routine. What, what, do, you, what do you got? I bet you got a Rolling Stones T-shirt. Or I bet you got a Rolling Stones hat, you know. Or some people got the Rolling Stones outfits on, you know. And a Rolling Stones something. Maybe you're being discipled by some famous ball player who may be a nice guy, but maybe really no one. He's discipling you into a life of selfishness and greed, maybe. What do you got? You got a ball cap on. You got the guy's, you got the guy's uh, baseball card. Or you, you, you got his number on some kind of jersey or something like that. You see what I mean? It's very common for people being discipled to have a, um, a cloak, a shirt, a hat, something that connects with the person discipling them. You see what I mean? So this isn't anything unusual. It's just something we do all the time. You got a ball cap on. You got a sweatshirt on, you know. It's pretty common. But uh, make sure we're getting discipled into the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, if you got Mary discipling you, you won't have the Rolling Stones discipling you. She won't let that happen. If you got Mary discipling you, you're not going to be discipled by some kind of selfish, greedy person who just happens to be popular or famous at this time. That's why it's good to have Mary discipling you to make sure that those other people discipling you are the right ones. And with those people and with Mary, guess what? You're going to be true disciples of Jesus. You're going to be holy as he is holy. Now, a lot of times people get worried and say, well, wait a minute. I'm afraid that Mary might interfere with Jesus and I would end up focusing more on her than on Jesus. Now, that will never be a problem. Uh, because if, if a person is a good Christian, they will not let you focus on them more than you focus on Jesus. They will not let you do that. Now, of course, there are a lot of people who are Christians, and yet they have their weaknesses. There are many pastors who uh, are discipling people, but they are uh, letting the people focus more on them than on Jesus. And boy, if Mary was involved in that situation, those pastors wouldn't do that. Praise God. That's a stopgap. That's a check. That's a, a help to make sure that when we are being discipled by someone, we get discipled the right way and we don't take our focus off of Jesus. That's why Mary is so important to be one of the disciplers of a person. That's why it's important to have her cloak around us or at least a representation of her cloak. See, there's a lot of spiritual warfare in discipleship because it's so important that you can see a lot of abuses, a lot of confusions, a, a lot of uh, things that don't develop properly. And that's why a lot of people just stay clear of discipleship completely. And you can see why they do that. But, but when you live a life trying to avoid abuses, you're not going to get anywhere. You have to live a life positively growing positively moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. You just can't have an unlife. I'm trying not to do this. I'm trying not to do this. I'm trying not to do this. You've got to be trying to do something. And, and so uh, we can't just spend our life trying to be an undiscipled. We have to be discipled, knowing there's all kinds of pitfalls and problems in spiritual warfare, but knowing if we're discipled by Mary, that's going to take care of that other discipling and make sure it's done in the right way. When we talk about this great man, Elijah, who discipled Elisha, uh, it takes us to the scene in Mount Carmel where the chapter before the discipling of Elisha, Elijah had this great battle with 850 false prophets and he won. 1 Kings 18, 19, they had the big showdown at Mount Carmel. The big showdown at Mount Carmel. Now, amazingly, the scapular, according to the traditions, was given to a man, Simon Stock. And we don't know if he was, it was given on Mount Carmel or he was given to him and he went to Mount Carmel. But somehow or other, 
This has something to do with Mount Carmel. And Mount Carmel in the Bible is a place of beauty, but because of that 1 Kings 18, it is a place of spiritual warfare and a place of victory. Now, so when you get in this whole area of discipleship, you get into an area of warfare. The devil knows this is a gigantic threat to him. He doesn't mind Christians who are retarded spiritually, who are backwards, who are not moving, who don't, haven't grown up, who are, like it says in 1 Corinthians 3, infants in Christ. He's not threatened by these people too much. He knows they're not going to do anything. But when he sees people growing in the power of the Holy Spirit, really being discipled according to God's plan for discipleship, then he's really threatened. There's tremendous spiritual warfare. We see some abuses. We see some casualties. But if you're being discipled by Mary, in addition to being discipled by another person on this earth, I'm telling you, you have really got some protection making sure your discipleship is going the right way and making sure that abuses do not develop. There's a, a tradition about the scapular. It says anybody dying who wears this is going to go to heaven. It's going to have eternal life with Jesus in heaven. Now, some people misunderstand this. They say, uh, well, you know, you can live a terrible life, do all kinds of rotten stuff, but you got that scapular on you and you got a one-way ticket to heaven. That's not, what, that's not what the Lord is teaching us here. The Lord is saying, if you die having lived the scapular, living the scapular means being discipled. Living the scapular means being holy as Jesus is holy. Uh, now, if you've lived a life of being discipled, of uh, hungering and thirsting for holiness, if you've swallowed your pride and said, I need people to help me, I need to be an apprentice, I need to, to work with someone who is more experienced in the Christian life, if you've lived like that, well, when you die, you know where you're going to go. You're going to go to heaven. You're going to have eternal life. So don't think the scapular is some sort of trick that you can just kind of, you know, trick your way in heaven just because you happen to have the right, right clothes on, you know. But it really does mean a lot when you think of the real meaning of it. Wow. So Mary right now, she's going up to people. She's throwing her cloak on them. She's throwing his cloak on them. And, and this is a representation of that. And, um, you know, like Elisha, after she, he got the cloak thrown on him, he said, I'll, I'll be your disciple, Elijah. You're a great guy. You're fantastic. I will be great, great to be your disciple. You're kind of wild and crazy, so I'm a little bit scared, but I'll go anyway. But I, let me just finish up here. I got this plowing to do. I'll go home, say hi to everybody. You know, uh, I'll be there in no time. You know what Elijah said? Forget the whole thing. Elisha, I don't, I don't mean it. I take my cloak back. I, you did not uh, get any invitation to be my disciple. I don't mean a thing. I don't mean it at all. Well, uh, you know, what is he saying there? He's saying there that uh, you don't have to respond to that invitation to be a disciple by, by Mary and by others. You don't have to respond to that. When Mary throws her cloak on you, you can just say, no, thank you. And you can still keep the cloak on. But in your heart, you can say, you can have that cloak on me all you want, but it doesn't mean anything. Like I'm sure there's people who've got a Rolling Stones t-shirt on who hate the Rolling Stones. They don't care anything. They just happen to find this t-shirt and they need one, you know. Or they got this ball cap. They don't even like baseball, but, you know, they wanted something to shade their eyes. You know, just because you got a certain, certain thing on doesn't mean you're committed to anything. you got a Cincinnati Reds ball cap on, you might be a big Dodger fan, you know. Well... Well, so you can have a scapular on, but you may not be committed to discipleship, to holiness. You may not be asking Mary to disciple you. So, so you, you see what I mean. It's not just having it on. It's believing it in your heart. But it's so important to have it on and say, well, why don't I just believe it in my heart and not, and not have it on? It's kind of a nuisance having this thing around your neck and everything. And it always, you know, this type of thing tangles up all the time. You know what I mean? Uh, so you say it's kind of a nuisance and so some people have a little scapular metal but still I think it's better to have this in fact if I had my way it would even be a little bigger so it would look a little bit more like a, a poncho like like it should uh, but 
But, uh, you know, say, well, we you need that. Just as long as you got that commitment to be discipled and you're going to ask Mary to be one of the people discipling you and that will make sure all the other people discipling you do it the right way and you don't go the wrong way. Well, can't you just have that in your heart? Well, I guess you can. But I just think God wants it expressed in very tangible ways. You, you know what I mean? It's so easy to, in the midst of the everydayness, the boredom, the ups and downs, the difficulties, the spiritual warfare, the confusion, the trials, the troubles, the tribulations. It's so easy to kind of forget about being a disciple. Technically, everybody baptizes a disciple of Jesus. Very few people are ever conscious of that. They have no idea of being a disciple at all. It's so easy to forget it. This tangible thing, this, these two pieces of cloth joined together by string, this helps us really remember, at least it should, that we are being discipled by Mary and others to be disciples of Jesus. The Lord became man to make uh, his relationship with us incarnate, practical, human, something we could touch. And I think the Lord likes to do things this way. So, so you, you see what I mean. I believe this will be a big help. Now, you can get scapulars probably at your churches, I hope, or at your um, at uh, kind of religious stores, uh, have religious items. But if by chance you uh, don't see any way that you can get a, a scapular, well, you just uh, write us and let us know, and we'll make sure you get one. And you say, well, I can't afford it. You can afford it. You get it for free. But uh, there's probably many people right around you that can give you one. And, uh, you know, we'd like to hear from you anyway, just to say you heard the program and that you love us and you're praying for us, uh, even if you already got a scapular. But if, if, you, if you won't write us or tell us the good news about how, how God's working in your life, uh, well, write us to get a scapular. But, but, uh, or get a scapular and tell us you got one. But, but whatever, there, there's so much that God can do when we submit ourselves to be discipled by Mary and by others that he sends into our lives. Now, when we talk about discipleship, a lot of people say, you know, I'm open to it, but there's nobody around. Everybody around looks to me to do it. And I'm kind of, I don't know much about the Christian life myself, but there are other people who are worse than me. So... I don't know, I feel like I'm kind of in an impossible situation. Well, then it's really obvious why you need Mary's discipleship because through no fault of your own, you really don't even have much of an opportunity to have a people that you can see right before your very eyes discipling you. That's too bad, but, but the Lord's not going to penalize you because the people who are supposed to be discipling you aren't coming to the fore. He's going to provide in other ways with Mary. But, but don't think Mary takes the place of this person you can see discipling you. She does if you have no other recourse. But if there are other people, and of course they have their weaknesses, they have their limitations, of course they do. You, you can't say, I'm going to wait for this perfect person to come around and disciple me. Well then, you better go die and go to heaven then you won't be, need to be discipled anyway. Uh, you know, you have to accept these people like... Uh, Barnabas was being discipled by Paul. First, I think it was the other way around. Uh, it's hard to say. And Paul wasn't the greatest guy in the world. John Mark wanted to be discipled by Paul, and Paul said, fine. But when John Mark quit, Paul said, get out of here. Uh, you're not going to get back in after quitting. So, you know, Paul was a person who had his good days and bad days. He had his sins. He had his problems. And yet the Lord chose him to disciple people. And so, you know, don't look around for perfection because you're not going to find it. But, and don't let the disciples, discipling of you by Mary take the place of people that God leads into your life. Mary will disciple you in such a way so you will open up to these people. Now, of course, uh, there will be, as I said before, the occasion where some people have no recourse because the people that were supposed to disciple them just are not responding to God's grace. Well, in that case... You do have Mary, but don't automatically drop people 
in front of you and just take Mary. Get both of them. Okay. I'm going, when you, when you get the scapular, instead of saying they just give you this, they call it investing you. Investing means like putting on a vest. That means like throwing the cloak over you. So I'm going to throw the cloak over you. Now you can ignore this. It won't mean anything. Uh, or you can take this as a commitment to discipleship, letting Mary disciple you and other people disciple you. So let me put the cloak over you now. And if you would open your heart, maybe some of you just bend down here. I'm just going to put it right over your head. And what does it mean? It means what you want it to mean. It means that some of you are choosing to be holy using God's method and God's plan of making a person holy using live people right in front of you who are going to minister to you and disciple you. You need to be submissive and open to these people. You need to have that right discipleship relationship with them. Mary you disciple these people also, making sure they're discipled in the right way and guarding them from any abuses. And we pray for a group of people that are holy as Jesus is holy, holy as the Father is holy, holy in every aspect of their conduct, disciples of Jesus, imitating Jesus, thinking like Jesus, talking like Jesus, walking like Jesus, feeling like Jesus, being like Jesus, discipled into the very image and likeness of Christ. We pray all this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days. He is the light that shines in the darkness. He is the rock that stands. Glory and honor and power be unto the Lamb.